Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the symposium. My name is Huan Yu, and I also go with Larry to make life easier. And I'm a fourth year PhD candidate in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. And uh, first, I want to take this opportunity to thank my advisor, my colleagues, and my collaborators at both Northwestern and University of Illinois. And with the funding support from National Science, uh, Science Foundation, Howard Hughes Medical Institute, and a few fellowships at Northwestern, I'm lucky enough to work on a fantastic technology, which is called trans electronics. What do I mean is this kind of electronics can dissolve into your body. Then some of you may wonder why would we ever want to use this technology? So let me share you a personal story. Two years ago, my father fell out from a construction site and broke four of his ribs. He was in the hospital and doctor performed the surgery. It was a small one, so he recovers well, but the uh, implant device was imported into his body to support the bone and to accelerate the bone healing. And that's why he was asked to go back to the hospital six months later and get another surgery. So this is where our device can come in. By eliminating the recollection of this device, he doesn't need to go back to the hospital anymore. So this kind of device is useful not only in this uh, pain relief, saving of the money, also it can be used to monitor the body signal from inside and help us better understand the function of the organ and also help us to give the delivered, uh, delivered treatment in time. So that's why we envision the device we developed will change the foundation of the future electronics. Here we have two basic requirements. First, we have to make sure the device is working, and then the device can be dissolved into the human body. So let's take a look at this figure. And first, we have this uh, electronics working as the conventional device, and it's up to 90 hours. So this figure shows the performance as a function of time. So this one is pretty stable. And then, in the next few hours, the device is completely dissolved into the human body. That's why we can play with this uh, time and make sure the device can work in some time and then dissolve. And then what does a typical device look like? This is pretty much what it looks like, but also to make life easier, we have this simplified version. So in a summary, we have three components. First, we have to use this substrate where we can build our device on. And here, this one isn't a problem because we use silk, and silk is uh, already approved by FDA. So don't need to worry about this one. Next, we have the magnesium for the interconnection to connect all these components together. And this one is also good because this magnesium is also widely used in the biomedical industry. And the problem comes from the third one, the electronic components. Because we want to build a high performance electronics, so we have to use the industry standard silicon. And as we all know, silicon is pretty much stable. So what can we do with this? Luckily, we find silicon is actually reacting with biofluids. The problem is the reaction rate is just so small. Then what's our solution? We can simply use a thinner one. So if you think of our conventional device as Sears Tower, what our device will look like, it will be a few blocks. So taking this Sears Tower, we will need to wait 600 years before the device can dissolve in the fluids, let alone in the air. And for our device, it's only about 10 days. That's why we can make this electronics functioning as we imagined. And then we come back to the second problem. How can we make sure the device is working during the first 90 hours if the device is dissolving at the very first beginning? So here, uh, I want to show you two things we can play around. First, the thickness of the device, and another one is material. And this sounds hard, but it turns out to be easy because we can just add another layer on top. So if we change the protection layer on top, we can protect our device underneath. So let me show you an example. It's the resistance of this device as a function of time. So as we all know, the resistance goes up means the device breaks down. Here, if we only have this device, magnesium, it will break down in about one hour. That's pretty quick. We cannot get that device working. 
but adding another layer of the magnesium oxide on top. This is 400 nanometer, this is even thicker, uh, 800 nanometer. We can extend the lifetime of this device to about a few hours. But this is not enough because we cannot change the thickness of the protection layer infinitely due to the limitation of the space. So we have another one, which is called silk overcoat, another one on top of the protection layer. The structure of this silk overcoat can be engineered. And that's why we can change the time as we want. So here, just to show two examples, this is one example with a silk overcoat. And it can change the time from this three hour to six hour. And this one is another one with highly functioned and slow dissolution. And we can change the time from 10 hours to about two weeks. And we can even change the structure of the silk to make a longer lifetime. So that's the basic two ways we can play around to make sure we have a working device that can work up, up to a few weeks. And then we can, we're ready to build an actual device. So here is the device. We have all the components, silk, uh, and uh, silicon and on top of silk. And this device is actually pretty small. On the figure, it's only about like one by two centimeter. And in a few minutes, the device starts to dissolve. And in about five minutes, it breaks down. And then in about 10 minutes, it's pretty much dissolved and the small blocks can circulate around the blood vessel and get out of the body. And some of you then wonder, can we use this device in our body? And actually we have performed some animal tests and the result turned to be very promising and it accelerated the bone healing and the uh, wound recovery. But due to the time limitation, I'm not going to show that. And I'm happy to talk this detail about, uh, about this detail during the break uh, by the end of my talk. And I just want to give a comparison between the daily intake we have for these device materials and the material we have in our device. So take silicon as example. In our device, we have three microgram. And in this daily intake, we have 10 milligram. So basically speaking, we have our device silicon which is 1,000 times smaller uh, than our daily intake. So in other words, if you don't take enough silicon, you can take one of our device as supplement. <laughs> and here is a video showing you how this device is dissolving in the real day. And here, it's sped up by twice the speed. Just want to show you a quick overview. And in this actual device, we have uh, different components and to make sure uh, this one is the induct coil to give the wireless power that can enable us to uh, uh, power the, the signal inside and out and without connecting other wires. And in about like, one and a half minutes, the device is pretty much gone. And uh, that shows us it's actually real promising. We can use that in the future. And talking about this, I'm really, I feel a pity that my father don't have, in, uh, is, he's not in, lucky enough to have this device back in two, year, two years ago. But I'm happy to tell you, no matter what, you might, uh, no matter what you device, disease you might encounter in the future, or what you might need in terms of the treatment or the uh, uh, daily monitoring, we will have this device ready for you. Thank you.